guys, Paul here again on our quick video. Um, I've kind of not spent a lot of time this week because my um, Range Rover for a little while, just purely because I've got a few, a few other projects going on and <coughs> I've kind of spent a lot of time in my arm and fracturing recently. But um, I've been noticing in my videos that this one seems to be quite popular in my review of the, the Range Rover. So I've got a few modifications in store for it, and the first one what I want to do just now is just to give a wee try out. As, like I said in my review, these um, tyres here, the sort of standard rock gripper ones, are not really got a lot of tread on them. They're quite small, but they, I don't. They're already at times they're a bit inconsistent with grips. Probably the best way to put it. So what I thought I'd try is I'd try my pro. pro excuse me, Proline Hyrax um, tyres off my TRX4 Defender. So I've took them off that just now, I've stuck them on, and you can see I'm going to get, let me move this camera, sorry, I'll probably get about another 10, 15 mil ground clearance off them. Um, the, the tread pattern on them as well is a lot bigger, a lot beefier, um, the foams in them are much better, so to me these are the best crawler tyres I've ever actually tried. So I've put them on here just now and to stop the body rubbing what I've done um, well hopefully to stop the body rubbing when I'll give it a quick try in the in the workshop it didn't um, seem to be any problem but I've I've raised the height up to not quite maximum but probably about nine tenths of the way at the front and maybe a little bit less than that at the back. I mean it's something if you do yourself, maybe see how it goes for you. This is just gonna be a kind of trial and error, but um I really do think this is an amazing little rig, especially for a budget rig. And um, if something just like the tyres makes it go a lot better, I mean, I don't see why you'd really spend the money on anything much more expensive than it, because it's just fantastic. Um, really got a lot of time for it. I mean, there's loads of body shells you can get. They've just came out with a Subaru Brat one as well. Um, I like the Coyote pickup one you get. I may actually get that for this too. Because in the case with the Range Rover, you actually get the front and back bull bar bumpers, which don't fit on with the Range Rover shell, as it's got its own kind of um, hard bumpers on its actual shell anyway. But, I mean, you could have like three or four different kind of varieties of vehicle going off the one thing, no problem. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Um, the only thing it might let it down, because they're a bit bigger wheels, but... I've not changed yet because that's what I kind of do at one stage at a time as I'm not sure how the standard servo is going to take the wheels but it is a light rig so hopefully it shouldn't be any problem but what I'm going to stick in here is I've got a spare 20 kilogram power HD servo which probably tonight when I get back in if this goes well I'm going to stick in and see how that works out for the next time I take it out so as I go through the stages of this vehicle I'm going to put more videos up of just different things I'm doing to it and um, hopefully by the end of it, it'll be an absolutely fantastic little rig. But even in standard form, it's not that it's bad. It's just, I think there's just a few things you could do, just minor things that would make it even better, basically. So we'll start just now, see how it goes, and um, hopefully you enjoy the video. If you do, it'd be nice if you subscribe as well. I'm um, trying to get to my 100 <laughs> subscriber goal. I'm hanging about 70-odd just now, so... Um, if anybody can help me out with that, it'd be great, but forgetting all that nonsense, let's just see how this Land Rover works. Or Range Rover even, sorry. Right, that's me got the body on, and first off, it just looks a lot beefier with the wheels on it. They stick out nice and wide, it just, I think it's got a nice sort of aggressive sort of look to it as we butterfly goes past there. Um, see, with the steering raised up just now, you can see it's quite close to the corner touching, but Nothing seems to rub, but I mean that's going to be hard to say until we start actually driving if it's going to cause any effect. Worst case scenario, you could possibly notch a little bit off the bumper, but I don't really want to start cutting the body shell off if I don't need to. But we'll start taking a wee drive just now. Um, I've got the head cam on just now, but I'll eventually I'll probably I'll probably put this to sort of my fixed camera on the ground so you can get a better look at the car. And when I'm talking, it's a bit easier to see what I'm doing. But I'm kind of going to stick to the same routes as I've done on my, um, my sort of review video, just so you can see the difference in the tyres. But 
already I can see just even just going over that little hump there it's biting a lot better in so far there's no rubbing noises or anything so well, maybe when you go slight rub there actually and I go full lock when I'm turning that You can visibly see how much higher that's actually looking as well. And it's definitely chomping through a lot easier. You used to notice a lot of wheel spin with the sort of standard tyres. I think they're just so close to a road pattern that any kind of sludge or loose ground they just slip off easy. But this is one of the sort of steeper kind of hills that um, I've had it up don't know if you can see on the camera just now but that's here no problem yeah so it is quite steep so like I say with the axle being raised up a bit more getting here is a lot easier already um, I've approached this just now and try to go as slow as I can but it's climbing up no issues whatsoever um, that was a drastic difference if you watch the old video there's a lot of wheel spin and a lot of throttle required to get up there but coming down is going to be a lot harder because it's such a light rig it seems to go over nose quite easily so I'm thinking about putting a sound system in it like my TRX that will give it a little bit of weight at the back might keep it down but um, if I can get down here I'll be quite happy Yes, no problem. You can see that there as well when it got stuck on the rock. It kind of, you can see the actual treads biting in and a lot more grip off the tyres. And where would the fun be without doing some water, water splashes with your rigs i'll have to go and do that straight away just now what i'll do is i'll sit set up my fixed cam and then um, with the fixed camera we'll get some some sort of better views of this traveling through all different surfaces and i can tell straight away before i even do any more running with this uh, charisma the range rover that it's a drastic difference yeah, there's a lot of sort of stones and rocks inside this sort of puddle as well that um or pond as we'll call it to scale it a bit different but this was bumping over you could hear getting over last time i was in but already with these tires the height and the grips making a drastic difference no issues i think it looks really nice with these too and I think, I'm hoping too that when I put this Power HD servo in I'll get a bit more of a steering lock because I mean that's one of the downsides if not the only real downside to this rig I would say I mean tyres are tyres but the the steering lock is pretty poor compared to a TRX or an Axial or anything else I've driven but um, still a fun fun little car Do a fast run through just because I do like trying to get dirty. <laughs> Good fun. You can hear that tiny, tiny little rub that, like I say, if I maybe not, it's just a tiny bit off the bumpers to make a big difference to it. As you see if it's unlocked there's a little chatter that I'll try and zoom in on that for you to see. You can just see it just slightly rubbing and you can hear the sort of chatter there but it's really minimal. I mean you're talking maybe two or three mil off the edge of that and that problem's going to go away so that's something I'll look at tonight when I'm putting this new servo in. Next thing I'm going to try is here is a sort of a lot of sort of bigger, sort of looser rocks, uh, things that can kind of potentially hit the diff 
Also, there's a lot of smaller gravel, you'd expect it to sort of slip a bit in the wheels. But um, <clears throat> we'll see how it goes with these tyres too. You can see that, there's no issue. The only issue I'm really having is the steering lock. But that's, like I say, hopefully get changed tonight. Um, if the rig would turn just that little bit tighter, you wouldn't have to take two bites out of things. But yeah, it's performing really well. Um, really enjoying my time with it. bellied out there. Right, I've got my own right little predicament here. Uh, I've got one wheel at the sort of front right down, the other ones aren't on the ground, so see if we can find some way. <laughs> this is a bit different. There we go. Right back on. Steering lock again, there's a bit of a problem, but I mean, with uh, the standard tyres there, they were too, they'd been too small to even find any ground, and when they did, they didn't, don't have the sort of the knobbles on the side to get some grip, so that's another good example of uh, how much of a benefit these tyres actually are. Continue up to some more steeper, bigger, jaggier rocks, but the rubbing doesn't seem to be causing too much problem other than on steering rock. Lock. It's not affecting anything at all with the suspension when you're when you're driving. It's not really rubbing that way. It's just purely when the steering lock's on, which is quite a limited steering lock just now anyway. I don't know if it's still on camera, hopefully it is, but it's going to continue to try and drive back down. Well, maybe not, I just got stuck in a bush there. <laughs> we'll have to go and recover it. Right, now I've recovered that if you might embarrass and tip over there. Um, we're we'll trying up another really quite steep technical bit. There's loads of plants, loose rocks and awkward angles. But one thing I will say a positive, um, I mean, the motor in this is really more than capable. It's got a good, good amount of power, especially since it's only on 2S. It's, um, it's got a lot of guts. Oh, don't like that angle. I've read a lot of other people saying that they don't feel there's enough control with uh, the ESC, with the steering and throttle control bit. I mean, if you're watching me here just now, obviously it's a difficult bit and I maybe could be doing it slightly better, but there's nothing wrong with the throttle on this car at all. Look at that, gripping up no problem. That's why I just keep on thinking in my opinion that um, this little rig, just the two or three different things, is as good as a TRX4, if not even better. I mean, and that's for a guy that's got a TRX4. That was my first ever crawler. Spent crazy amounts of money on it. Granted, it looks lovely and there's a lot of details on it and it's really scale, but nothing that you couldn't do to this. And if this is like your first crawler or um, you want another crawler or you just simply not got the budget to go crazy, I mean, the Charismas are, are great. I mean, I'd happily get another Charisma without even thinking about it. front diff stuck there a little bit, but the bigger wheels are just helping it push through. It pretty much feels there's no limits to what this is doing now, other than the steering lock. Engines on full there. 
Oh, back wheel off. I think what I'm going to have to definitely do now is I've, I've tried this off my TRX just out of curiosity but what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy another set of Proline Hyrax Rax tyres and I'm going to get them onto this rig too just full time because the transformation is pretty impressive Right here's, here's a rock that I'll just go for a second ago, I don't know if we'd do it again, I actually didn't expect to do it, but my TRX4 bumper seems to bash off that and stop me getting over it. The Charisma before had no chance, but since it's so light with these new tyres, look at that. Oh. I made it a bit harder than it was the first time, but still got to the same point, still got over, no worries there. That's just pure tyre grip. Right, I'll try and go next level with, with hill climbing with this just now. As you can see, she's sitting here. Um, this is a, I don't know, this is way over 45 degrees anyway. It's really, really steep hill incline. So what I'll do, I'll try and set the camera up. If we can get up it, would be fantastic. If we can't, well, I'm not really expecting to, regardless of the tyres, but I'm just trying to give you an example of how capable a rig you can get at a budget. Here we go, so I've got the camera set up now at the best kind of angle I can get um, to sort of show you the, the range over climbing. I'm not sure if I'll get up, but... Um, if anything, it'll just get you a good, good idea of the grip of the tyres. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't good. I think that was just purely a foot speed though, so I've already got further than I was expecting, so I'll maybe take it a little bit faster. Um, that up there no problem I mean that's I think that's a limit to what any real standard crawler could do without spending a lot of money on it other than just tires that's that's this is a hill that I'm literally sitting on on my side slipping down and it's got up there no problem <coughs> minus the first attempt which we'll all just ignore <laughs> it was really turned the ground up really good coming up there but um what goes up must come down so We'll see if we can do it the other way. I really think a bit of weight at the back of this would help. Usually it's the front of your crawler you want to put weight on, but with the battery being right at the front of this one, that's not a problem. I think it just needs a little bit at the back. You know, wrap a little bit of lead or something around the back. Back of the chassis might even help, but... Anyway, let's see how we go on just now. Sliding sideways, not good. That's a straight. Oh. Yeah, got down, no problem. Well, we're up here, we'll try and get up again. <laughs> That's really impressive. Nothing, nothing to say other than that. I'm just, it's like, it's like I've just went and bought it, bought another rig. There's that much of a difference. Try to get. Sorry for not talking. Just put the edge down here. Back down again. I've noticed as well, just, I think I said it earlier, but I mean, the, the front axle 
it's not getting hung up on half as much stuff now just with that extra 10 15 mil that I'm getting off these tyres. It's just like I say, it's like I bought a new rig and it's completely different. So that little rubbing sounds a bit um a bit annoying, but it's gonna be an easy enough fix there. And um yeah. That's kind of all I've really got to say on this video really is hopefully hopefully it's helped guys out who've been wondering about tires. I think it's the way to go and I'll probably just leave this with a bit more footage I'll put up and um hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, we say please subscribe and try to get my hundred subscriber goal. Also a like would be nice too. But um yeah, Proline Hyrax tires. I think this is definitely the way to go with uh the charisma 100% huge difference so see you guys next time I put a video out and the next one I do this will be with a power HD servo and then um, after that we'll probably just start adding bits and bobs to it as we go along so catch you guys later bye